Hello. This is Steampunk Star Racing of AmberStreet.com, and I'm here on The World is a Mess, and I just want to steampunk it. Uh, episode 15 of January 26, 2021. And I'm here with Daniel. Daniel's Hot Topics from Ontario, Canada. Hi, what's up? You're from Bellwood, right? Yeah, Bellwood, Ontario. Awesome. I'm here in North Hollywood. Yeah, this is our first podcast since uh, a little late coming to the game myself, but uh, our first podcast since uh, Biden has been sworn in as president. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about that a little bit and then maybe anything else. You blocked out your video. Everything okay? Uh, yeah, just one second. But yeah, um, so amazingly, I guess because thanks to all the National Guard, I was really worried that there was going to be an election chaos on January the 20th as Biden was sworn in because there were Trump supporters who were making death threats or were threatened to threatening to attack Biden or kill Biden why he was being sworn in. But thankfully, you know, they had, you know, several thousand National Guard troops in Washington, D.C., and that didn't happen. Um, it was amazingly peaceful. I think there were some minor protests, but now that Trump has been defeated and gone back to mar a -Lago, um, his support has deteriorated a little bit. Although amazingly, he still has like 73% support of Republicans. And so I, I'm, Trump's been amazingly quiet. I know that since Trump has been out of office in the last six days, he's been looking for an attorney to represent him in his criminal trial. Um, you know, impeachment is moving towards the Senate. I know that uh, Rand Paul, the, you know, like the douchebag that he is, tried to dismiss the impeachment trial, uh, saying that it was extremely partisan. And I'm like, really, dude, you know, he and Trump incited a riot. It was seen live on national television. Con members of Congress were almost killed. They had nooses hanging up outside the Capitol building. Um on January the 6th and Rand Paul and 45 Republicans voted to dismiss uh, the trial proceedings. So Trump probably won't be convicted. I know five Republicans did vote with Democrats. So there is bipartisan support, some bipartisan support, but it's like, come on, really as horrible as Trump's been the last four years. Uh, you know, there were the same, some of the same Republicans voted to impeach Bill Clinton for lying under oath about sex. Uh, but yet, uh, and that was incredibly petty, but yet they want to dismiss charges against Trump for inciting insurrection against the United States government. Uh, it's, it's just surreal, but yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, it looks like um, there'll be 55 votes to convict, but unfortunately with the I think the impeachment trial is supposed to start February the 8th. Um, they're going to need, by the U.S. Constitution, it states you need 67. I thought it was 66, but apparently it's 67 votes in the Senate to convict. And if they only get 55 votes, it won't be enough. Anyway, so what's what's going on with you and what's your thoughts on this and Biden being sworn in and all the election chaos this month? Wow. So new year, new president, hey? Yeah. So yeah, I, thought, I mean, uh, Biden's a mixed bag. I knew that to begin with. Uh, I mean, he has talked about there. You know, he doesn't want to do austerity because Americans are hurting, and he wants to do the two thousand dollar stimulus checks, um, and he wants to move forward with more programs to for economic relief and uh, ramp up production of vaccines because Trump apparently had no plan for vaccine distribution. Um, there's only been 16 million people vaccinated, which sounds like a lot, but there, um, there's, there's 328 million people in the United States. So if you do the math on that, let me do the quick math on that. So there's 328 million, I'm just gonna say 328, and you have 16 people uh, vaccinated out of 328. So that's going to take um, 20, 
and a half months to vaccinate everybody. So this is going to be really bad and damaging to the U.S. economy. Well, it's already been bad and damaging to the U.S. economy on a historic scale. We have the worst um, depre economic depression since the 1930s. But um, at the same time, uh, if they do not ramp up vaccine production, it could get much, much worse as this continues to disrupt the supply chain and the economy. And um, so I am surprised that Biden said that he doesn't want to do austerity, but he is still trying to reach out towards Republicans that want him dead, literally want him dead. Um, but, you know, like there's that representative from Georgia, Marjorie Taylor, talked about how she, she thought uh, Nancy Pelosi should be hung for treason. She said a lot of really terrible things, and she she was supportive of the coup. I really think these members of Congress, uh, Lauren Bobart and Marjorie Taylor, they need to be impeached and removed from Congress. Uh, any senators who voted to interfere because there was inside information uh, tours given to some of the insurrectionists uh, and they almost succeeded because they managed to penetrate deep into the Capitol building before getting pushed out by Capitol Police. But, you know, um, you know, it appears that the voting against the certification of the election was just a delay tactic to allow insurrectionists, including some military uh, veterans that have participated and used military tactics to break into the Capitol building. And so at the very least, even if Trump does not get convicted, he will at least have the he's had the dubious distinction of being the first president to have been impeached twice. And he's also got the dubious distinction to be the first president to not have a peaceful transfer of power. But um, the one thing I do not like about the Biden administration and um, is he has talked about how he's dropping the option for single pair. And he wants to fund COBRA, which is just subsidies for insurance companies. And insurance companies are a Ponzi scheme because basically you have, you can get a bronze plan under the Affordable Care Act, what some people call Obamacare, and it will cost you 300 a month with a $5,200 deductible. That's not insurance at all. Who has 5,200? They need to have a public option, especially for people below the poverty line. 80% um, of Americans, I would argue, are below the poverty line. And what I mean by below the poverty line, they cannot afford a $1,000 emergency. Uh, the way poverty is calculated in the United States, it's very, very conservative. Uh, they consider anybody who makes over 1,200 a month um, working even part-time uh, to be above poverty. And that's just simply not true. Uh, you cannot afford to live comfortably on 1200 a month or leave a rent a cheap apartment for that price. And apartments in recent years in the United States due to property developers have had hyperinflation. We have hyperinflation in healthcare. Uh, I would argue the United States at this point has got the worst healthcare in the world because the, you know, you look at the number of deaths um, as of January the 26th, see, let me look at COVID, 19 deaths in the United States, we're well over 400,000. Yeah, we're up to 425 or 425,000 deaths, 25.5 uh, million infected. Worldwide, we've had 2.16 million deaths, 100 million cases worldwide. This is the worst pandemic in 100 years. And it looks like if things keep going on track, because we still got uh, like, well, today in the United States, the, I guess the death rate has gone down slightly. It's, well, I mean, it's still 3,085 deaths yesterday. Or, well, no, sorry. January the 25th, there were 3,136 confirmed deaths. And that's probably an underestimate because there is splash damage. How many people died because they couldn't go to the emergency room because the emergency rooms were full with COVID patients? We haven't calculated that into the death toll. And so uh, COVID-19 is now the leading cause of death in the United States. So um, it's going to take some backbone and some strong will. Uh, your Republicans are obstructionists. 
I know that Mitch McConnell has talked about impeaching, or not impeaching, sorry. I've been having the word impeaching on my mind, but he's been talking about doing a filibuster uh, in the Senate. So, um, but there is a way, there is a procedural option where you can vote on finance and then just have a vote, a majority vote to pass it. So we will see, uh, the Democrats only have a narrow majority um, of 50 to 50, and then you have the vice president that can vote in a tie, which would be 51 to 50. Um, technically, you have only 48 Democrats, but two independents. Those two independents, Bernie Sanders is one of them. I can't remember the name of the other independent right now. Um, uh, they caucus with the Democrats, so the Democrats have um, majority control. But yeah, so it's been interesting. Um, I wish Biden would be more assertive and at least provide a public option because people need it. Uh, the average cost of COVID treatment is about $10,000 in the United States. And if you have, if you're over the age of 65 and you have Medicare, you're gonna have to pay $2,000. Uh, you're gonna have to pay 20% of that. How are you gonna be able to afford that? You know, the average person can't even afford a um, $1,000 emergency in the United States. Um, the U.S. economy has been, in reality, because they've been, you know, you cannot judge the U.S. economy just by this uh, stock market, but the U.S. economy has been in a downward recession since 2008. It never recovered from 2008, and it's gotten worse under COVID. So what's what's your opinion, Daniel? Any opinions about Biden being president? Uh, everything that has happened this month, January 2021? Yeah, there's been a lot of drama this month. Um can you imagine if, if like Trump pulled the same, the same uh, trick, like he got reelected again, like he did it the first time, right? He was supposed to lose the first time, but then he won. He won his four years, right? Yeah, he won through technicality again? because he lost the majority of votes in 2016. He lost by three million, but he won the right strategic states, sometimes by this narrow margin of 10,000 votes and certain strategic states. So even though he didn't win the popular vote, he won the electoral college. This has happened several times in US politics throughout history. I don't agree with it. I think they should do away with the electoral college. Yeah, that is problematic. Uh, Trump has talked about running again in 2024, although he's under criminal investigation for um, fraud uh, in upstate New York. And he's under investigation by the IRS for uh, $74 million in tax fraud because he apparently uh, claimed false deductions and got $74 million paid back to him. And, um, you know, there, there's other investigations. So let's hope that he gets convicted of a felony because if you're convicted of a felony, I, and he can be convicted of a felony now, he no longer has immunity or exemption by being president. So he can be convicted of a felony outside of impeachment, and this could prevent him from running for president again in 2024. Uh, I heard that he has delayed his plans to run for president because he was gonna file, but they said that he had to disclose financial documents. This would lead him vulnerable to criminal investigation because he would have to publicly disclose his financial documents. And so, I think Trump is depressed right now, from what I can tell, and he's just sulking in Mar-a-Lago. I know that he has tried to get an attorney. I know he's had a beef with Rudy Giuliani because Rudy Giuliani is suing him for money that Trump owes him. So we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I thought Trump was going to raise hell and maybe throw a tantrum and not willingly leave the White House. But I think he realized in the end that he had lost and the majority of the country had turned against him, including a minority of Republicans, even if not a majority. Uh, and, you know, of course, the majority of Democrats are against Trump and they should be because you should not take kindly to um, insurrection trying to overturn the Democratic votes of the majority of people. But yeah. Wow. Yikes. So how's everything going in Canada with you? Um, oh, today, today was really, 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 really cold. Yeah. Well, I'm sure like you're in Canada. 
Yeah. I mean, it, it's, yeah, so it just, yikes. Uh, yeah, it sucks. So, hmm. My, 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 my family went out, I was here, you know, just looking up things on the nets and, you know, like these kind of things we're talking about right now, right? And um, what's the general perception of, of people in Canada about Biden being president? Uh, well, from what I can tell, people don't really care. The people I've talked to don't really give a crap. I heard Biden is really smart. People tell me, oh, Biden is smart. Well, I, I would say he's smarter than Trump. But is he smarter than Obama? That's the question. I don't think so. Well, I don't think he's smarter than Obama. Obama was, uh, he had been a law professor, was a lawyer. Um, you have to be, you know, you're college educated to be a lawyer. And uh, I mean, Biden is college educated too, but I do think that he suffers from a tad of dementia. Um, although, I mean, maybe not full on dementia. He just seems to be a little bit forgetful and he stutters in his words, but he's done better than I expected. Excuse me. And um, we will see. Um, yeah, I, I think Biden is not as intelligent as Barack Obama, but he's more intelligent than Trump. Because Trump, yeah. if he had Trump. played his cards right, he, you know, he, he, he made a lot of mistakes, a lot of stupid mistakes and he alienated himself. He just, you know, like, you know, six months before the election, Trump said that he didn't feel like there needed to be another economic stimulus. He's like, the stock market's doing fine. It's doing fine. You know, we don't need another economic stimulus. And he's, and so, and then it wasn't until he wanted to, um, he did this for revenge against Mitch McConnell because Mitch McConnell had publicly admitted that Biden was the president elect and Biden had won the election. And so he threw out, oh yeah, I support $2,000 stimulus checks. And he actually cost the Republicans control of the Senate. And so he's turned some Republicans against him, although the majority of Republicans still support him. But he didn't, you know, if he'd just done a little bit better job of handling COVID, done a little bit better job of handling the economy, maybe threw out another stimulus. Uh, but he, he did nothing but mostly play golf and sit around and be fat and lazy for uh, most of his presidency. I, I had read somewhere that he had golfed over 200 days. Uh, that's a lot of um, taking time off and, you know, he was uh, intercepting data for COVID because he was just trying to suppress the data. Uh, you can only con so much before reality asserts its ugly head in front of you when you have something as big as a pandemic, the worst pandemic in 100 years. Uh, and that's, that's his downfall because you can tell that, you know, as a con man and a fraudster, he'd gotten away with screwing people over, screwing his workers over. He'd gotten away with hiring illegal immigrants at his casino, which I have no problem. You know, if immigrants come here undocumented and they're they're want to work and they're hard up for work, why not? But, you know, the point is Trump was a massive hypocrite. He said he was against illegal immigrants, but his casinos, his hotels would hire them. And then uh, he refused to pay construction workers um, by declaring bankruptcy even though he had the money to pay them, he was just being greedy and stingy mm -hmm. and he forced them to settle for pennies on the dollar. Um, yeah. Trump was not a good guy before he became president. Not a good guy. Now and he's not a good guy after he became president. He learned has learned nothing and he's been able to go through business and through most of his life by just denying reality. And that might work when it comes to like doing business on a casino where the only impact is uh, uh maybe a few thousand people but when you deny reality of a national crisis like covid and you ignore the facts and you try to suppress the reality that's impossible to ignore uh you know most people are going to ignore the business of one casino you know if you screwed the workers that worked for you at that casino no, most people are not going to even notice that but they're going to notice on the national stage 
you know, you ignoring and trying to suppress the data. And there were data scientists in Florida that were investigated and threatened by Trump bootlegger uh, Governor DeSantos, uh, who's a really, really bad governor of Florida. I am so glad I don't live in Florida anymore. I, I'm originally born in Florida, but um, can't claim to miss it. Uh, I mean, it's nice to visit the beaches, but it's not nice to live there. But mm -hmm. yeah, who wants to live in uh, BP slicked oil beaches and corrupt city councilmen, um, corrupt county commissioners, corrupt politicians who the only people they represent are rich millionaire property owners who own beachfront property. And that's all they represent is money denters. And that, that is the general problem on a micro level and also on a macro level. Um, but yeah, um, if they don't turn this economy around, uh, more chaos is going to be coming. Uh, just from people in general. Uh, I just don't see how the current system can continue to survive without severe reforms. And like, you know, it's like bring back the 90% income tax bracket, the top income tax bracket. We have the United States has the lowest corporate income tax in the world. You have companies like Amazon who actually get tax rebates, Walmart tax rebates, Caterpillar tractor tax rebates, General Electric tax rebates. They not only not pay any taxes, they actually take in more tax revenue than they pay out. Uh, they, they get corporate welfare from the tax code. So on paper, it looks like we have a 23% or whatever corporate tax rate. I know under Trump, they uh, severely uh, cut it. They cut dividend uh, tax too as well. Um, but um in reality, all, the majority of these large corporations pay zero. And not only did they pay zero, they pay a negative income tax bracket. Um, and it's bad because they're parasitic to the economy. Uh, but it's not a matter of anymore of boycotting any one company because you can boycott Amazon, Walmart, Target. All these companies are bad. They treat their employees like crap. Uh, they, a lot of them get tax exemptions. And uh, that was my girlfriend, Colin. She might be joining us. Hello, welcome. You're on The World is a Mess. I just went to Steampunk it. You're on uh, my oh, podcast. podcast. Yeah, you're on the podcast now. I got you on speakerphone. Um, did you want to okay, join I'm in? Getting ready to, I'm going to be working out soon. You're going to be working out? Okay. Do you want to join the podcast or you want to let me go? We, on point, but I don't know. we only have seven minutes left on the podcast. I can be on it. Yeah, I can be on but it. I, I was talking about Biden being inaugurated and all the chaos of Trump. And I was talking about the Trump impeachment. What was the Canadian point of view? Uh, he said a lot of people in Canada didn't really care who was president. As long, but, they, they, but Daniel, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. But, um, but they didn't, Daniel, uh, but they do, the Canadians do, your take on the consensus up in Bellwood, uh, Ontario, the Canadian, the average Canadian, you think, do they care that Trump is out of office or not? Uh, some people are happy. Most people don't really give a crap. Most people don't really give a crap. Well, I mean, that makes sense. The standard of living in Canada is much higher than it is in the United States. They have better health care up there. There's just like, when I went to Toronto in 2012, there was just noticeably a lot less poverty. Uh, you know, when you compare a city the size of Toronto compared to like LA, um, there's just noticeably less, there were still some homeless people, but they were like the alcoholic drunk homeless. It's not like what we have here in the United States where you have massive tent cities in every major city. But anyway, so, Anne, any comments about Biden being president? Any opinions on your... I'm happy that Trump is out of office. I'm so happy. Yes. I mean, this is my first podcast since our first podcast since uh, Biden has been sworn in. And I, th I really thought Trump was going to create more chaos like he did on 
January the 6th. I'm really surprised that he, he ducked down and has stayed quiet like a coward that he is in uh, mar a -Largo. But thankfully, um, and uh, Republicans have actually in the Senate have tried to get the impeachment trial dismissed. Uh, leading the charge of that was Rand Paul, who's a massive douchebag, saying that it's too partisan to try Trump. There's no, there's no, there's no standing for trying an ex-president. Yeah, there is. There was a senator, the United States senator in 1876, who resigned for corruption, I think corruption and bribery. And he resigned and he was actually impeached and convicted after he resigned. So there is legal standing for impeaching a politician who is resigned or left office. Because it's basically, uh, impeachment is a public trial of a public official. And Trump, if anybody, deserves that. But unfortunately, there were 45 Republicans who voted to dismiss impeachment charges, and you needed a majority for that. So there were five Republicans, surprisingly, that voted with the Democrats. But it looks like Trump probably won't be con convicted on February the 8th. It'll be 55-45. And the way the Constitution of the United States works, you've got to have 67. I've heard conflicting sources. It's a two-thirds majority. So it's 67 senators or 66 senators. But there's all 100 Senate seats filled. So I guess it would be 67 senators. So from what I can tell right now, it looks like there will there will be a peace for trial, but there will only be the votes will be 55 to 45, which will not be enough to convict. But at least Trump will have the dubious distinction of being the first president in U.S. history to have been impeached, even if he wasn't convicted. Anyway, any other thoughts on that? We only got about uh, three more minutes. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm still wondering. Uh, what... Oh, sorry. Go. OK. Less stressed out. Okay. What about you, Daniel? Any last thoughts on that? I'm, I'm still wondering, do you, can you imagine what would have happened if Trump won the election? Can you imagine how, how many people would have been pissed off? What, what would have happened? You know, it would have been crazy. Well, it would have been crazy, but, you know, at least Democratic voters respect more of the rule of law and want equality and justice as opposed to Republican voters. Because, you know, it's just crazy that 71 million Republicans voted for, or 71 million voters, Some, I guess there was some independents, maybe some Democrats, but it was a minority. But there was still a lot of people that voted for Trump. And even after everything Trump did, he still has 73% support in the Republican Party. And that's just crazy to me. We, we've got a severe problem in this country. Um, but um, hopefully moving forward uh, with, with a new president and Biden, at least things won't continue to get worse and spiral out of control. But we got about two minutes left. I'm going to save the last minute for uh, um, my um, farewell statement to the, what I usually do at the end of the podcast. But any last words, Ann? We got two minutes left. Well, talk about we talked about uh biden being president we just about joe biden well we talked about biden getting sworn in uh what happened on january 6th uh i was surprised that trump didn't create more chaos on january the 20th considering what he did on january the 6th uh talked about uh trump's upcoming impeachment trial february the 8th on uh basically how uh, he's been looking for a new lawyer because he's had a falling out with Rudy Giuliani because he hasn't paid Rudy Giuliani and Rudy Giuliani is suing him for back payment. And Trump was like, well, you didn't, uh, you didn't win any cases, so I shouldn't have to pay you. You know, but yeah, Trump being the baby man that he is, it's not surprising. So he's going to have a hard time even finding an attorney to represent him because this is, this is a criminal trial. But anyway, um, Thank you, Rockanne, and thank you, Daniel, for joining me. Um, this has been The World is a Mess, and I Just Want to Steampunk It, January 26, 2021. This is episode 15. You have a nice day, and I will see you 
25 billion years of will. Bye. Bye.